you try to warn them as much as you can. Right now on Fox Illinois News at 530, every parent's worst nightmare. What you need to know after police say a local child was attacked by a sexual predator. Plus, developing news as the feds search Caterpillar's Peoria headquarters. And H.H. H. Gregg filing bankruptcy, what it means for Central Illinois stores. Fox Illinois News at 530 starts now. First tonight, a shocking scene at Peoria's Caterpillar headquarters as federal agents show up with a search warrant. Good evening, I'm Katherine Tillet. And I'm Doug Quick. Earlier today, the feds entered three Peoria area Caterpillar facilities, including the corporate headquarters. Fox Illinois' Jacqueline Driscoll has been in Peoria all day. She joins us live now. Jacqueline, what can you tell us about the search? Doug, Catherine, if you look behind me, you can still see several federal agents' cars wrapped around the block of the Caterpillar headquarters buildings. All of those cars displaying signs that say official police business. Now, several federal agents did exit the building to retrieve boxes or bags out of their vehicles, but none have provided a comment as to what is taking place inside just yet. Now, he did speak with multiple Caterpillar employees who did not wish to appear on camera just yet, but all gave similar reports, and this is what we know so far. Three areas of the fifth floor, one area of the sixth floor. Employees tell me those are the accounting divisions have been roped off and all of those employees were sent home around 11 this morning. Agents were seen putting hard drives of those employees' computers into boxes and taking them out of the office. An upper level employee says a shareholder filed a suit about the company avoiding taxes through some business dealings in Switzerland. Caterpillar has issued a statement. They say in part Caterpillar is cooperating with law enforcement and while the warrant is broadly drafted, we believe the execution of this search warrant is rega regarding, among other things, export filings that relate to CSARL. CSARL is a Switzerland-based subsidiary for Caterpillar. This tax strategy first raised eyebrows back in 2015, now again after Caterpillar's 10K filings this year. Now, the U.S. Attorney's Office for Central District of Illinois spokesperson Sharon Paul confirmed the agencies that were on site today. She says those federal agencies include the FDIC Office of Inspector General, the IRS Criminal Investigation Division, and the U.S. Department of Commerce Office of Export Enforcement. We're going to actively follow this investigation and provide you updates as they become available. But for now, reporting live in Peoria, Jacqueline Driscoll, Fox News at 530. Thank you, Jacqueline. This man is behind bars tonight after police say he sexually assaulted a child. 24-year-old Keon Cooper is charged with the predator criminal sexual assault of a child and criminal trespass to state-supported property. It happened at an apartment complex. Cooper didn't live there. Police say he was homeless. Fox Champagne's Hunter McKee spent the day finding out why police don't always know where a sex offender lives. Keon Cooper was arrested at the Sunrise Apartment Complex, but he didn't, he didn't live there. So we found out how you can keep your kids safe from sex offenders in your area when they don't even have an address. It just makes me feel sick. That's how parents and Matt Toon feel after hearing a child was sexually assaulted. I mean, you worry all the time about your kids and to have it so close to home is very scary. Mattoon police arrested 24-year-old Keon Cooper Wednesday morning in connection to a sexual assault. Your kids mean the world to you and you do anything to protect them. And when they're in danger like that and they're out on their own, you know, playing or with their friends, you feel helpless. Cooper is not listed on the Illinois Sex Offenders website and according to Mattoon police, He's homeless. Anyone can look up a sex offender in their area. So we went to the Coles County Sheriff's Office to find out how you can keep track of sex offenders in your area who may be homeless. And it's just a sex offender database. So say if someone's moving to an area, a newer area, they can put in either like a name if they had someone in particular they had an interest in. Next to each name on that list, it will indicate if that person is homeless. The list is on the Illinois State Police website and you can search by city, zip code or name. Once they're on the list, police use a system to track where they are. If they were in the rural part of the unincorporated area, then they would check in with us. And then every week they would have to come back in, provide us a log of where they were and the time they spent at those addresses. If a person on that list is homeless, you can still see their picture on the city they are registered in. 
But other than that, police have no way of keeping track of them other than their weekly check-ins. And management at Sunrise Apartments told me Cooper had already been banned from the property before this incident occurred. In the studio, I'm Hunter McKee, Fox Champagne News at 530. A former University of Illinois student will be in court April 7th to face charges surrounding the death of her newborn child. Lindsay Johnson faces multiple charges, including first degree murder. Police were called after sounds of a baby crying came from her bathroom. Johnson was found later on campus after she was questioned. She told investigators where to find her baby's body. The state's attorney's office is not releasing any further information on the case. Right now, Oakwood officials are knocking down a mobile home that used to house a meth lab. Officers raided the lab at the 200 block of Lee Street yesterday. Police removed several meth-related items from the home before demolition began. No word at this hour on any arrests related to this developing situation. Decent weather today, but winter isn't over quite yet. Doug Quick is tracking some changes that could be headed our way. Doug? Yeah, a little bit of a shock today. Very, very brisk out there and some cold conditions across all of mid-Illinois. Right now we're looking at a sun cloud mix as we look out across the Twin Cities here on uh, the eastern Illinois area. And we're looking at the possibility of even some snow showers. You're right, winter's not over yet. It's going to be a cold start. We're going to be down into the 20s early in the day tomorrow. But with sunshine, we'll see temperatures at least up into the upper 30s tomorrow. We'll check out uh, more with that uh, forecast as we get into the weekend coming up. But the Dick Van Dyke Appliance World Live Doppler is indicating at least a trace amount of precipitation in areas across our southernmost counties. 37 degrees currently at Springfield. Winds out of the northwest at around 10 miles an hour. 35 degrees in Champaign-Urbana with a westerly breeze at around 17 tonight. Few clouds, but we do expect to see some sunshine tomorrow with a high only around 38 degrees. Now, Illinois Governor Bruce Rauner continued surveying the damage in towns hit by Tuesday storms and tornadoes. Today, the governor was in southern Illinois visiting with residents in White County. A tornado hit that area and killed a 71-year-old man in Crossville. Yesterday, Rauner was in Ottawa, where a 76-year-old man and his son-in-law were killed by a falling tree. Appliance and furniture store company H.H. Gregg has announced that it plans to close three distribution centers and 88 store locations on that list, stores in Champaign and Springfield. The current inventory in both stores will be sold over the coming weeks, with both stores closing completely by the middle of next month. Other store locations in Illinois expected to close include Schaumburg, Bloomingdale, Arlington Heights, and Niles. And Illinois is seeing more flu cases this year compared to last year. The State Department of Public Health's update from two weeks ago shows that the flu is widespread across the state with 93 outbreaks for the season. Health officials say even though we are closing in on spring, flu season is still here and you need to take precautions. We see people when the, it's getting nicer out, people gather. So there's you're going out to a party, you're getting out of the house, and you're around people that could potentially be infected with the flu. Dr. Sarah DeLand adds that you should not get a flu vaccination as we are nearing the end of the flu season, and it would not be effective. Coming up on Fox Illinois News at 530, Attorney General Jeff Sessions facing scrutiny over his past relations with Russian ambassadors. The president's reaction to the latest controversy. Plus, McDonald's wants to make it easier for customers to get their burgers and fries. How the fast food chain is going tech savvy. You're watching Fox Illinois News at 530. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, following the revelation he spoke with a Russian envoy during last year's presidential campaign, the nation's top law enforcement official has offered now to recuse himself, if necessary, from investigations into possible Russian interference in the election. While on a tour of the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier today, Trump tells reporters he believes in his attorney general. Mr. President, do you still have confidence in the attorney general, sir? Total. Right now, Chief Political Correspondent Scott Thuman brings us up to speed on that controversy surrounding Sessions. It would be better for the country if he'd resign. He didn't tell the truth about it. That's the key. The law has been broken. 
So what happened during confirmation hearings when Jeff Sessions was asked about campaign staff conversations with the Russian government? I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I did have, not have communications with the Russians. But upon allegations, he twice talked with the Russian ambassador during the election, and in the wake of General Flynn's resignation over his own Russian dealings, Democrats are demanding special independent investigations into the election, administration, and now Sessions. Some Republicans explaining and defending. But honestly, we meet with ambassadors all the time. I mean, I did a reception about 100 yards that way with like 100 ambassadors last year. I don't even remember which all the ones I met with. There's so many of you who don't like the idea that we, <laughs> we have a new president now uh, are looking for things. And uh, I know that's being generated from, from the Democrats. Senator Tim Kaine before this latest allegation. They say it's being kept alive by Democrats and by the media. Do they, do they have, is there Scott, anything as, there? Scott, as the media, you know that's false. 17 national security agencies have issued a unanimous opinion that Russia engaged in activity to attack the American election. They are very afraid of this investigation. Though some are asking how it's different from when Sessions' predecessor, Loretta Lynch, met with former President Bill Clinton while Hillary Clinton's email use was under investigation. She did not have a major role in the Hillary Clinton campaign. No, they're completely different day and night. Perhaps no issue bothers the White House right now more than this Russia investigation. And they insist that Sessions met with the ambassador as a senator, not as a surrogate for the campaign on Capitol Hill. I'm Scott Thuman. Now it's your turn to sound off in the wake of criticism. What should Jeff Sessions do? Visit our website at foxillinois.com and leave your answer for our question of the day. McDonald's corporate announced they will launch an app that will allow users to order and pay from their phone and pick up their food curbside. It's expected to launch in the U.S. by the end of this year. The burger chain giant hopes the app will reverse years of declining sales. The company's CEO says McDonald's will start to move more quickly to adapt to changing customer habits and tastes. Coming up, we're looking forward to the weekend and some higher temperatures. I'll let you know about a weekend warming trend along with a sneak peek across the next two weeks. It's coming up with a Storm Team forecast next here on Fox Illinois News at 530. It was another very windy day out there today. You can see the buds on the trees are not quite ready to bloom. And there's definitely some mud and leaves and debris yeah. left over from that storm. I was Definitely. looking at it. I was like, oh, yeah. someone needs to clean their Yeah, some of those sewers. buds out there. Just look, look at those leaves there. The little leafies there just you know, starting to come out. So. I have, um, uh, I think they're daisies or daffodils mm -hmm. that are starting to come up and the yeah. tulips I saw are starting yeah. to come up. They, they're confused. I'm, I'm, I'm not much of a horticulturist, but my wife is complaining about some of her things are coming yeah. up about that much. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening out there a lot sooner than usual. Well, hopefully, they won't be frozen here in the next few weeks or so as temperatures still can fluctuate down to well below freezing at this time of year. You always kind of expect the unexpected. Well, this is what we're expecting as we get into the overnight tonight. Still looking at some possible snow showers across the area, and it's going to be a cold overnight. We'll see temperatures down into the 20s, and then tomorrow only up in the 30s. And look at this. To add insult to injury, we're even seeing a few snowflakes out there along with some rain showers. This is part of that Alberta clipper that we've been talking about over the last few days, and it did push a little further south than expected. That was actually good news for us because just a couple of days ago, we were expecting to see uh, some significant snows across much of mid Illinois, but that has been transferred well to the south. So it's come in the form of rain showers for the most part. But even over the next few days, we could see scattered snow showers and maybe even some rain showers, especially across our northernmost counties. Here's what we're seeing at the present time, and you can see the scattered snow. We could still see a little bit of that a little later tonight as that uh, clipper system moves out to the east. High pressure moves in generally to clear things out, but we're seeing a disturbance out to the north, and this could bring some snows across our northern counties by late tomorrow evening. Look at that band of snow here. Just popped up across east central Illinois and crossing over into Indiana. Meanwhile, on the backside of that system, 
we're going to see a general warming trend that will take us through the weekend and even into early next week. Here's a future cast and keep your eye on your location here across mid Illinois. Look at the clouds and then here's that little band of snow that we could see Friday night and we could be waking up at least a few of you up in those northern counties. Livingston, Ford, uh, Iroquois and Benton County in Indiana could be seeing at least uh, some snow accumulation by early Saturday. This is the way it looks by Friday morning and then there's that second band of snow and you can see it across our far northern counties. So here we go. The storm team forecast for tonight. Mostly cloudy skies. Still a slight chance of seeing some rain and snow showers uh, primarily down to the southwest but even across the northern part we could still see a little precipitation there down to 22. Brr, 38 degrees tomorrow. Sunshine there it is that chance of snow across our northernmost counties tomorrow evening and here's a look at the next seven days including a day-to-day -day chance of that over the weekend. Now 90 percent of us probably won't see much of anything over the weekend other than enjoy that nice warm-up but there's some locations that could see at least trace amounts of precipitation. Now looking ahead over the next 8 to 14 days, this takes us through March 16th. We're looking at above average temperatures. Meanwhile, precipitation will be above average as well. And our highs today? Well, only in the upper 30s to around 40. And currently, here's a look at our current temperatures in the 30s. All right, and we got some Illini basketball. Yes, yes, yes. No matter how cold it is out there, the Illini just keep heating up yeah. and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. The Illini won again last night at home now a four game winning streak. Uh, it's pretty incredible what's going on. I have more coming up next in sports. You're watching Fox Illinois News at 530. To say John Gross and the Illini have had the most surprising turnaround in the entire country would be a gross understatement. This team was essentially dead and buried by anyone, everyone just two weeks ago. Now they're on a four-game winning streak and one of the hottest teams in the nation. And last night, they won one of the biggest games at the State Farm Center in over five years in front of an orange sea of over 16,000. The Illini beat Michigan State 73-70 to to win their fourth straight game and keep their NCAA tournament hopes alive. And on senior night, it was fitting. The senior leader, Malcolm Hill, led the way. He had a game-high 22 points. And with the performance, moved up to fourth place on the Illinois all-time scoring list. Just an incredible game, an incredible atmosphere, and the emotions were definitely high after the game. Talk about your seniors and what they mean to you personally as much as they mean to this team. A lot, John. A lot. Thanks. Thanks My family's been here for me ever since day one. You know, the fans support has been unbelievable. You know, I just, I'm just so proud. And I really appreciate the love I've been, I've been showing from the Illini Nation. So a big win for the Illini and Hill and the rest of the Illini seniors fittingly won their biggest game of their career at the State Farm Center in their final home game. Six seniors honored before the game. Malcolm Hill, Maverick Morgan, Tracy Abrams, Mike Thorne Jr., Jalen Tate, and Alex Austin. A sellout crowd to give them the best send-off they can ask for. So the last game at the State Farm Center, but they're expecting to keep playing for a while. Their final regular season game is Saturday at Rutgers, and Rutgers, the worst team in the Big Ten in dead last place. So they can finish on a five-game winning streak heading in to the Big Ten tournament. Win Saturday and win their first game in the Big Ten tournament next week. And that should be enough to make the big dance. Incredible. I have more on this game coming up tomorrow. Now, the Illini women trying to continue an improbable run of their own. They have to win the Big Ten tournament to make the NCAA tournament. They got the job done yesterday. Second round was, it, was this afternoon to Indy. The Illini taking on Purdue early on. The Boilermakers got off to a huge lead. Dominique McBride with a nice layup there. They were up double digits, but here come the Illini again like they have the last two days. Courtney Jones, the three-pointer. This game was tied late in the first half. Second half, Petra Holoshinska from the corner. The Illini have been on fire from three-pointer in the tournament, but late in the third quarter, again, more Purdue. Ariana Keys, the layup and the foul, and the Illini season comes to an end as they fall to Purdue 72-58. to 58. So the Illini done, mm -hmm. but the men seem to just be getting started. So fun. They play Saturday, then, of course, the Big Ten tournament next week, and then we'll go from there. But 
Incredible. You know, I'm not a huge right. sports person, but I'm really excited for them. Like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm getting into it I'm now. Trying to, I'm trying to make it as exciting for everyone, too. You know, if I say it, then everyone's like, yeah, 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 this is good. Some good news. <laughs> there you go. Hey, we got some good news tomorrow morning. Back into some sunshine tomorrow. 25, it'll be a chilly start. But conditions should be warming throughout uh, the day tomorrow. We'll be up to around 38 degrees and even warmer conditions expected over the course of the weekend. But not without maybe seeing a few scattered showers, uh, rain showers and snow showers will be possible late Friday across our northernmost counties. Uh, and uh, even on Saturday morning and then Sunday morning could see a few scattered rain showers as well. 90% of us probably won't see a drop. Until we get into Monday and Tuesday, more widespread showers with daytime highs in the 60s and fairly mild conditions will take us through the middle of next week. That's it. All right. Is that why you brought me cookies to That's make up why for I that forecast? You cookies, oh, yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Have a good night. We'll see you right back here at 9.